song was in my spirit this week. I just had to hear it. I want to thank our choir this morning. I want to thank you all for lifting up your voices. We have spent some time in worship, lifting up our praises to God. And when the praises go up, the blessings come down. This is the time when the blessings come down. We believe that as we worship God, as we express our love toward God, He responds by loving us for the message. Yes. So today, we're going to draw your attention to the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. You found it, you may signify by saying amen. amen. Will you now rest on your feet for the reading of God's word? From the New King James Version of the Bible, the word of God reads Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, thank God for however, however, many of those who heard the word believed and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for a word to believe in. And we pray, Father, that today you will start us on a journey that will cause us to take one step at a time to standing up for our faith. Lord, move in our hearts and in our minds and give us holy boldness and give us godly courage that we can stand in this present age and tell people about a man named Jesus. And so, Father, we ask very humbly that you would allow your spirit to work through me for your glory, that this body of Christ will be edified, and you, Holy Father, will be glorified. We need you, God. We just need you to speak. We need you and your presence to manifest in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. And I want to thank our ushers this morning for your service. And I want to declare in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Those words, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Those words sparked the first major miracle after Pentecost by the apostles. A man who was lame from birth heard these words. And the power of God in the name of Jesus caused him to leap, to stand, to walk and to praise God. I don't know about you, but I, I think if, when you watch a child learn how to walk, it takes them a little time. This man had never walked before. From the time he was born. When you read in Acts chapter 3, you read about this miracle and this man that they brought to the temple and from the beautiful gate every day to ask alms. And he says to, to, to Peter and to John, hey, he's, he's, he's asking alms for the poor. And they said, silver and gold, I have none, but such as I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This man didn't just get up and walk. He didn't just stumble. He, he got up and went to leap and celebrate. But after this miracle, there arose some circumstances that caused the apostles themselves to have to learn how to rise up and walk in their faith, even in the face of adversity. So in this series, I believe God wants to encourage the church to rise up and walk into the fullness of your purpose. And so we're going to spend five weeks together 
in this topic, Rise Up and Walk. And today, I want to preach from the idea, Rise Up and Testify. All right. Rise Up and Testify. Over in chapter 3, as I said earlier, we find this lame man is healed. And the people of the temple, when they recognize that this man who was walking and leaping and jumping and, and praising God had been the one that had been lame there his entire life. When they recognized it was him, a crowd gathered around. And when the crowd gathered around, Peter began to talk about the power of God. He let them know it wasn't because of us. The power came through the name of Jesus. How many of y'all know there's power in the name of Jesus? And so in the name of Jesus, he began to encourage the people to believe in Jesus. And then he began to tell God's story. He began to share the gospel. But then something happened. And that's why I want to focus our attention today on what happened. Because I need you to understand that sometimes when you testify, when you tell about the goodness of Jesus and the power of God and how he's working in your life, everybody's not going to be happy. Yeah. And you've got to learn how to rise up and walk, yeah. even though they're not happy. Yeah. First thing I want to share with you today is that some people can't handle your testimony. Yeah. They just can't. They can't handle your testimony. Look back at verses 1 and 2. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed. Somebody say disturbed. disturbed. That they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So we've got three key people. We have our priests, we have the captain of the guard, basically, and the Sadducees, who are just really uh, out, out of sorts, because... These men are standing up telling about the power of God and they're testifying about Jesus Christ. Huh. I want to tell you about these three people. Three people who can't handle your testimony. Right this down. The priests. The priests represent those who have rejected Jesus. Well, Reverend, what are you talking about? People who have rejected Jesus. We all know that there are people in this world who've heard about Jesus and they decided not to make Jesus Christ Lord of their lives. Mm -hmm. They rejected Jesus. Yes. There are people that we've invited to church and they decided they weren't coming to church because they don't like church or maybe they heard things about church or heard things about people in the church so they're rejecting Jesus. They're not rejecting the church. Mm -hmm. They're rejecting Jesus. We've had people in our lives all around us who have chosen to live their lives according to some other uh, model or some other authority other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And these are people who have rejected Jesus. And the Bible tells us about these folks. Over in John chapter 3, when we read, you know, where it says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you keep reading, you read a couple of verses later where it says, those who have not believed in the son are condemned already. And here's why. Because they love the darkness more than they love the light. Mm -hmm. There are just some folk who are just going to reject your testimony, reject hearing about the goodness of Jesus because it is so counter to everything that they are about, so counter to the lifestyle they want to live, they really just don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't, they don't want to hear about Jesus. They want to hear about when's the next stop we're going to make at the state store. They want to hear about the next party that's coming up. They want to hear about the next you know, business they can get themselves into that has nothing to do with God. They just don't want to hear about Jesus. You didn't do anything to them. You were just telling them how, how richly God has blessed you. Yeah. And you began to share your testimony and they rejected it. Some, some people just can't handle your testimony. Mm -hmm. But the, the, captains of the, the captains of the temple, the captains of the guard, these are those who have authority. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we have a, a pecking order socially. We don't always realize this, but when we're around our friends, when we're with our family members, when we're on our jobs, when we're at school, there is a social pecking order. And in that pecking order, there's a leader, there's an influencer, and then everybody else kind of follows that person. You ever been sitting around at a family meeting and, and, and you have a good idea, but there's somebody else spoke and everybody listening to them instead of you? It's because they had more influence than you did. And, and th th those leaders who have some type of social authority, they don't want to hear about Jesus. 
The person on your job that feels like they're the boss, they're in charge, they have to walk around and flaunt their title and their position, they don't want to hear about Jesus. Let me tell you why. Because Jesus is Lord. And when Jesus shows up, he has all authority. So even though you might be the lowest man on the totem pole, you got the highest authority in Jesus involved in your life. And they don't want to hear about it. They don't want the, the, the scene to change. They don't want the mood to change. They don't want their, their influence to change. They want to maintain their social authority. And they just don't want to hear about what God is doing in your life. Hmm. But then you got the Sadducees. The Sadducees are those who don't believe in miracles. Yeah. You see, the Sadducees in Bible times, they were a group of people who did not believe in the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. They did not believe in, 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 in the resurrection of the dead and angels and other spiritual things that, that are in the scriptures. And so when, when these men began to talk about Jesus being raised from the dead, they took issue with it. And let me tell you who these people are. They're the people who have already decided in their own mind that they know it all. And you start telling them about what God has done in your life and they try to all, they try to pick it apart and say, well, that wasn't God. That wasn't God. See, what happened was it was a payroll malfunction. That's why you ended up with that extra money on your check. No, baby, that was Jesus. That was Jesus because the silver and gold and his cattle on a thousand hills are his and he decided I need to have some more. He gave it to me. That was Jesus. Yeah. Well, see, you went to the hospital and you saw the doctor. They did the MRI. And then they found out this was wrong. You took this medicine. Ah, but, you know, they, they practice the medicine. But Jesus made me and he knows all about me. And he's the one that healed me. That was Jesus. Yeah. Don't try to rationalize my healing. Don't try to rationalize my, my, my deliverance. You see, some of these folks are just a little too smart for their own good. Yeah. Because they don't have a child of life faith. Yeah. Those are some folks who don't want to hear your testimony. Yeah, right. And just because they can't handle your testimony doesn't mean you keep silent. Let, let, let me show you something. Matthew 10 and 33. Matthew 10 and 33 says, But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Jesus says if, if, if you will deny him in front of other people, yeah. he's going to deny you in front of the Father. Yeah. Which means we can't fear their faces. We can't fear the backlash of what they may say or think about us when we start talking about the goodness of God in our lives. We, we can't worry about whether or not they put us on the list. You know the list. It doesn't matter. Because some of y'all have put too many Jesus things on your Facebook profile and folks have unfriended you and you hadn't seen them on Facebook in six months. Yeah. And you don't even know why. Yeah. It's because you just had a little too much Jesus. Yeah. I'd rather have too much Jesus than to have too much hell. Yeah. Because the truth is, if you don't praise him, the rocks will cry. And I'm telling you, I don't want a rock to cry out in my place. If God does anything for me, I don't care who is in front of me or where I am or what the setting is, I'm going to testify about the goodness of Jesus. And I already know some folks just can't handle it. They can't handle it. Second thing I want to tell you is that some people will attack your testimony. Some people will attack your testimony. Look at verse 3. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. The naysayers, the ones who have difficulty with your testimony, will sometimes turn on you. And when they turn on you to attack your testimony, they are trying to discredit you. And some others won't be happy Watch this. Some are not happy with the change in your life. Because you won't go do with them what you used to do with them. They don't want to deal with that testimony that you're trying to get your life right. Well, where were you Sunday? Well, I went to church. You went to church? Man, we ain't got over at Ray House and we were waiting on you. No, 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 no. See, I'm trying to get my life right when you're trying to get your you try to get your life right. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with your with your life. Yeah, have one. 
They, they want to maintain what they know. They, they don't want a new norm. So I'm going to tell you three ways that people will attack your testimony. First of all, there's going to be a personal attack. Because the Bible says they laid hands on them. I don't know about you, that's personal. When you lay your hands on somebody, when you grab somebody, when you lay hands on them, that, that's personal. And, and what happens is sometimes when you share your testimony, people will try to discredit your testimony by attacking you. Yeah. Oh, so you go in the church now. You, you who used to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You who was just with me last month when we went so and so and did such and such. You, and they'll attack you. They'll, they'll get it about the fact that you've got a, a life in Jesus and that you're trying to get right with God. They will attack you. Oh, oh so, so you're talking and you, you're telling everybody, testifying about that promotion you got on your job and, and, and oh, but, but, but you didn't deserve it. Yeah. You weren't as qualified as so and so. Oh, yeah. You just a supervisor's pet. Oh, yeah. oh, no. People will attack you yeah. to try to get at your testimony. And then sometimes there's going to be a, a private attack. Because the Bible says it put them in custody. Uh, when you put somebody in custody, you're isolating them from everybody else. Have you ever had a chance where you told somebody about the grace of God and then later on they hemmed you up in a corner and tried to very nicely tell you you don't need to be saying that? We don't want to be hearing that. They don't do it in front of everybody else. They just get you over in a corner. And they begin to almost threaten you in a very private, not a public attack, a private attack when they got you off to the side so they can give you a piece of their mind and then they usually come and bring a piece of some other people's mind too because they said, no, watch out for that. Watch out for that. They said, and, and we feel like, no, it's you who's got me hemmed up in this corner. Oh, how is it they all of a sudden? Sometimes it's a private attack when you share your testimony. But, but then here's the worst one. It's the prolonged attack. Because they kept them until the next day. It went, I'm just going to deal with this now. I'm going to continue and put some time behind this thing. You ever had somebody that's all of a sudden become aggressive with you after you shared your testimony? Or after God has moved in your life? Or after God has blessed you? You get a new car, and they hate on your car every time they see it. Yeah. It's years down the road, they still hating on your car. Yeah. They're not just hating on your car, they hating on every other car that's the same, make and model, even though it's a different color. They, they just upset. They are, up, uh, they are upset <laughs> that God would bless you in such a way. And you happen to just come along, tracing through the neighborhood with the with the radio up and the windows down. And now they just got problems with you. And so they can't speak nice to you half the time. They can't speak nice to you the other half of the time. They talk about you, but it's prolonged. And there's nothing you can really do about this 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 prolonged aggression. You, you know what I'm talking about. I, listen. I've been in circumstances where I've been elevated, where God has lifted me up, and then there were people, and I'm, I'm praising God for it, and there are people around who just refuse to have anything to do with me. Amen. Oh, you, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you are the one that got chosen to do the project, or you are the one that got chosen for the promotion, or you were the one that got chosen, and God has lifted you up, and folks, come along. And they're just mad with you constantly. Oh, yeah. Well, you're just trying to do what God is blessed you to be able yeah. to do. People will attack. See, some people cannot handle your testimony. Some will attack your testimony, but there's good news. Over in Isaiah 54 and 17, the Bible says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. Yeah. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Yeah. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. I don't know about you, but it's something reassuring about knowing that God's going to fight my battle. And though you come against me, God is going to raise up a standard against you. And you can talk about me all day. But my very blessing, my very action, my very testimony will condemn you. Tell your neighbor, 
rise up and testify. Rise up and testify. No, 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 no. Say it like you mean. Say, rise up and testify. Rise up and testify. You want to know why? Because your testimony cannot be held captive. Yeah. Yeah. And your testimony cannot be changed. Yeah. And it cannot be locked up. And it cannot be silenced. It cannot be erased. And it cannot from the Lord. Yeah. And the blessing that you have is not your own. You got it from the Lord. It was not by power. It was not by might, but it was by the Spirit of God that He blessed you and gave you the heart and the desire to testify and tell your story. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I want, you might want to write this down. God will defend His Lord. God will defend his glory. Now, when you're reading the scripture and you're going back and reading in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, when people stole God's glory, he always stepped up. And so when you testify and you give God the glory, don't worry about it. God got you. God got you. Because he will defend his own glory. Amen? Amen. Well, I know those were two negative things. Some folks will. Can't handle your testimony, and so I'm going to attack your testimony, but I want to end on a positive note like the scripture does, yeah. because some people will believe your testimony. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people will believe your testimony. Yeah. Look at verse 4. However, I like that however. Mm -hmm. You know, however, in spite of, regardless of, mm -hmm. however, many of those who heard the word, believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. The apostles testified of Jesus. The apostles gave God the glory, even though the priests wanted to keep them silent, and even though they were taken into custody, but because they had already given God the glory, the Bible says many believed in Jesus. You see, sometimes your testimony is not for you. You know, God will bless you just so that other people can see you be blessed. Yeah. Which is why when he blesses us, we don't need to take our blessing and go hide in a corner with it. We don't need to go and take our blessing and do what we want with it. The first thing we need to do is turn around and give God the thanks. And give God the praise for whatever blessing he has given us in our lives. Sometimes the blessing is not just for you. He might bless you today with something that you may not think is very valuable, but somebody else saw it and they thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. And you got to understand, they may have been praying and wondering, how is God going to be able to bless me with such and such, but God gave it to you. And now because, just like Sister saying today, what he has done for others, I know he'll do the same thing for you. Sometimes people need to see God do some blessing on on your behalf, so that they'll know that God can do some blessing on their behalf. Your miracle is for the glory of God, and your miracle is an opportunity to show how good God has been to you. I'm going to give you three reasons people will believe your testimony. We're going to go Three reasons people will believe your testimony. People will believe what God has done for you. Not just, you know, just testifying about God is good, but when you get specific yes. and tell what it was that God did for you. Not just to testify that God is a healer, but to testify and say, I was sick in my body. And I prayed. And my God heard yes. my prayer. Yes. And in the matter of moments, yes. my life turned around. And I began to feel his healing grace. And I'm standing in front of you today because it was my God. Yes. Not, not just to talk about stuff in general, but to yes. be specific yes. about how God has, has done something. And I was riding down the road. Yeah. And, while, and, and I thought to myself, Lord, I'm, I'm running a little late. And I was going to go. But then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and 
told me to slow down. By the time I got to exit number so and so, there was an accident that there was waiting for me. Yeah. It was my God that spared me. It was my God that kept me safe. Sometimes you got to tell people what God has done for you. I didn't know if I was going to be able to provide for my family. I didn't know if I was going to be able to put food on the table. But then God sent an angel by. Somebody who just decided today I want to bless you. And they gave me $20 and I was able to go and get some groceries for my family. See, you got to talk about what God has done. Because people will believe what God has done for you. But also, people will believe what God has done in you. I know that I've been changed. Oh, do you remember me? you remember how I used to cuss every third word? you remember how I used to treat everybody back? But God did something in my heart. People will see that and say, you know what? You look different. You act a little different. You're not running the streets like you used to. What's going on with you? It's because God has done a work in me. It's because God is starting to move in my life. And if he can change my life, he can change your life too. And people, people will believe what God has done through you. Oh my Lord, and have mercy. When you when you were the person who thought that you could pray for the sick, you didn't know they were going to get well, but you prayed for them. And then God delivered. That's something God did through you. When, when you saw somebody who needed some help on the side of the road, and the side of the road of life, and you helped to pick them up and to get them turned back around and going on the right path, that was God working, working through you. There are some things that people need to hear about God and the work that he does in your life so that they can believe. Yeah. One of the things that happened to me as I was trying to understand if God had called me to ministry, I had a series of dreams. I labored over these dreams. I asked people. I asked ministers. I, asked, I was just searching to pray to God. But one of these dreams stood out to me. In the dream, I was on a bus. There were three people on the bus. Myself and two other gentlemen. I'm sitting on the bus in my dream, and I'm in a dream now. I'm reading my Bible, and the guy across from me starts to argue with me. He starts to attack me. He starts to try to tell me that what I was reading wasn't real, that God wasn't real. And I found myself locked in a battle to defend my faith. I found myself locked in a battle to make sure that Everybody knew my testimony was true. Because I realized after a few minutes that I was in this battle not just for me, but for the soul of the third person. Yes, yes. So when the bus stopped and it was time for me to get off, I got off the bus, I turned around, I looked at the bus driver, and the guy I was arguing with in my dream, he had turned red and sinister. He, he beckoned for me to come back on the bus. And I told the bus driver, I'm good. The bus driver closed the door. And I thought to myself, I remember it just like it was yesterday. I thought to myself that I had lost. But then I heard a voice behind me. It was the third man. He said, I don't believe it. I don't believe what that man said on that bus. I don't believe anything that he was saying would let me know that he had been listening to my testimony and that he had believed what I had to say. Your testimony is powerful. Your testimony will cause people to truly believe in God. You just have to have the courage to rise up and testify. Tell your neighbor, rise up and testify. Tell them like you mean it, rise up and testify. Because you've got to tell somebody how God came through for you. And you've got to tell somebody how God made a way for you. And you've got to tell somebody how God maneuvered and positioned you to receive a blessing under a window of heaven that opened for you. Is there anybody here today that would join me and rise up and testify?